guys, I'm so excited to be here with you today. This video is going to be all about how to boost your metabolic rate so you can eat more and get lean while burning fat too. And I'm also going to share with you my very favorite protein ice cream recipe at the end in the second part of this video. So to start off with, let's talk about the metabolism. What is the metabolism? Basically, our metabolism is a sum of all the different chemical reactions that happen in the body, but we're going to talk specifically about our TDEE, which is the Total Daily Energy Expenditure Equation, and it's made up of four different things. So the first thing that it's made up of is our basal metabolic rate, or BMR, and that is how many calories it takes for our bodies just to run our bodies, just to keep them alive, keep our brain alive, filter our blood, filter our breath through our lungs, all the different functions that you don't even realize are happening in your body. It is about 60% of your total energy intake in the day. It just comes from that. And it also depends on how much muscle you have, how heavy you are, and how much energy it basically costs just to run your body in a day. So that's BMR and it makes up 60% of our total TDEE. And you can change that based on your body composition and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about how I changed my body composition from very high fat. I had a body fat percentage of close to 40%. I got it down initially to 34% over four years and then down to 21% two years later and I'm working my way down to a little bit lower. I'm getting leaner, building more muscle and I'm boosting my metabolic rate. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that. The three other parts the second one is actually called NEAT and it stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that's all the fidgeting that you do in the day, all the little not sort of movements that you're not really conscious of, fidgeting at your desk, uh, little movements that you make that are unconscious, getting up, going to the bathroom more often or less often, moving to your car, just all the activity that you do that isn't really part of a scheduled routine or workout. The third one is eat, but it has nothing to do with eating or food. It means exercise activity thermogenesis or physical activity. So all the calories that you burn in doing a workout. And this can add up to be quite a bit depending on how active you are, what kind of workouts you do, to being really next to nothing if you are totally sedentary. So that is one of the factors in boosting metabolic rate that we're going to talk about. The last one that a lot of people are less aware of is actually TEF, which stands for thermic effect of food. It's also known as DIT, dietary induced thermogenesis, or specific dynamic action. And what it means is the amount of calories that it takes your body to break down your food. So it actually takes quite a bit of energy for us to break down food. So if you eat a protein, Proteins are basically like a long string of Christmas lights made up of individual amino acids. So all the lights are little individual amino acids and the body has to break this down and cleave those bonds so that you just have amino acids left over. And the same thing goes for starches, for carbs. So if you eat a banana, for example, it's a long polymer chain or Christmas lights stringing together all these individual molecules of glucose. And the body has to break that down into individual units of glucose. So some macronutrients have a higher effect than others, which is so cool. Protein actually has the highest thermogenic effect of food or highest thermic effect of food with about 30%. It's estimated between 25 to 35%. I usually round it out around 30%. So that means if you eat a piece of chicken breast, that is 100 calories, it's actually going to only net out to be about 70 calories for that piece because 30 of those calories were used just to break it down. It's a really difficult complex food to break down, so it requires a lot of energy. The second highest is carbohydrate, which is about 
5 to 15 percent of the calories are lost in breaking it down and the lowest is fat. Our bodies don't really have to use a lot of energy to break down fat and fatty acids cross over into fat cells very easily because they're lipid soluble. So protein really is the macro that you want to prioritize if you want to boost your metabolic rate. So to boost the metabolic rate, there's a few things that we can do. And one of the ones that I love is looking at the thermic effect of food because if we prioritize protein, because it has the highest thermic effect of food, you're gonna have a big calorie loss. So think about that 100 calories of chicken breast I mentioned. If you eat a whole portion of it of two or 300 calories, then you're gonna lose almost 100 calories of that just from the energy it takes to break it down. That's a huge loss that people don't realize so you're not actually getting four calories per gram of protein, you're actually getting closer to around three calories. And you get a small reduction from carbohydrates, from the healthy carbs, and uh, not really as much from healthy fats, but there are other effects where fats don't actually have the same amount of calories that, that we think that they do. So if you prioritize protein, you're gonna maximize your ability to boost your metabolic rate, boost your metabolism because you're eating the macronutrient that takes the most energy to break down and that's how it has such a great effect. Now the other thing you can do is by eating more food it actually studies have shown that our non-exercise activity thermogenesis goes up so neat so when we eat a lot of energy we actually move a lot more and we boost that neat that uh, 20%, which is 20%, it's quite high, and we boost that just because the body has a lot of fuel and it you tend to fidget and move more, whereas if someone's eating a really restricted low calorie diet, the body is gonna be adapting down and slowing the metabolism in order to conserve energy. So in doing that, that's why a person typically feels really cold if they're on low calories. And you just notice that you don't move as much throughout the day. You just tend to stay in one place and you're more sedentary because your body's trying to conserve energy to keep you alive. And it just goes into that mode. So that's one of the things that happens when you eat more food, you eat more calories and you prioritize protein, you actually get a higher thermic effect of food and you also get higher NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the third one, which is eat, exercise, activity, thermogenesis, you can boost just by doing a workout. So if you work out on a consistent basis, three to five times a week, you are going to be getting noticeable improvements and boost in your metabolic rate. But that's something that we've all known for a long time. What I think is really key here is that if you wanna boost your metabolic rate, you wanna boost your BMR which is your basal metabolic rate, and that's gonna be enhanced by how much muscle you have because muscle is the most metabolically active tissue that we have. If you boost your muscle and you work out and you increase your muscle, muscle gains, then you are going to be burning more calories. So that's why doing strength training exercise, resistance exercise at least three to five times a week is really going to help you boost more, boost your metabolic rate higher. Every pound of muscle you burn actually 50 calories more just at rest. So if a newbie can gain, you know, I know for myself I gained eight pounds of lean mass in two years, but that's an extra 400 calories that my body can then burn just at rest. So even if you gain two to three pounds in a month of working out, which is quite a lot, uh, you get you know sort of an advantage from being a beginner that's an extra 150 calories if you gain three pounds of muscle that you're going to be burning in the day so it has a huge huge impact when you are always training at your limit and that's what you do with strength training because you're always lifting as much as you can possibly lift for as long as you can possibly do it for and it's a really great way to boost your metabolism so now I'm going to show you guys how I make my very favorite protein ice cream or protein shake and it's a really refreshing way to cool down in the summer when it's hot but you also get your protein in there as well. Alright guys, so I've got my ice here. I'm just adding the protein in. 
I'm going to pour in this cup of almond milk and then I'm going to blend it all together. All right, there it is all done and the ice and almond milk give it such a yummy texture. It's protein ice cream or protein shake. And it is so, so good. Let me know if you guys try it out. And go enjoy this on the balcony. Alright you guys, that's the end of this video. I wanted to talk to you about the metabolism, some of the best ways to boost your metabolism, how to be able to eat more, get leaner, and basically build more lean mass. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed the protein ice cream or protein shake recipe. And comment below if you'd like me to share more protein recipes, more information on how to boost your metabolic rate, exercise routines, Things that you would love to hear more about, let me know. And let me know if you try out the protein ice cream recipe. I would love to know how it turned out for you. Thanks for watching, guys.